far northeast of Scotland, leave port for some of the coolest seas in the world. <laughs> Theirs is the most dangerous job in Britain. Now on Trollerman, a new band of fishermen are making their mark, braving violent storms and deadly conditions. All to put fish on our plates. If you give me a long position, I don't know where your nets are. You boy do understand, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I'm clear of your nets. I'm going down between your nets. It's an international incident. John Buchan, skipper of the Ocean Venture, is being accused of trawling through the nets of a Spanish fisherman. No, I'm clear of your nets according to the positions you've given me, unless you've given me a long position. The Spanish skipper is using fixed gill nets. Normally he'd lay them in much deeper waters. Today he staked his claim in the same fishing grounds as John. You give me the position of this net, the correct position. No. That is well from here. You give me a long position. The Spanish nets cover 18 square miles. The skipper wants to keep John and the ocean venture well clear of them. The Spaniard means to cripple John's boat. He starts to shoot a rope from the stern of his own vessel to foul the ocean venture's propeller. Scabber, for that rope back aboard your boat, I am clear of your nets. Right, go by the position you give me. So for that rope back on your boat, I will, so I will shoot my creeper and I will throw right across every net you have. So I'm threatening you because you're threatening me with that rope. To get the rope out of that water. No. Or else. You threaten me with that and I will threaten you to everything that you have on board. The rope, the rope is the propeller. Or... You gave me the positions and I am clear of your positions. So you can take that rope back on board your boat. I have positions on my chart. I am going down to clear of your nets. It's not possible. Not possible. You speak correct English. You give me wrong positions and I'm trying to keep clear of your nets. You try something like that and I will throw my creeper right through your nets. You will complain about nets after this. John decides to settle the argument. He's checking to see if there's any sign of Spanish nets caught on Ocean Ventures gear. Okay, boys. I'm leaving up like here, Skip. I'm stand by. He's trying to cordon off a big, big area at sea. Positions, I kept clear his positions, and then he says, I'm going through his nets. It's ridiculous. Trying to work with people, and I want to pick up the whole sea. You told me lies. You've broken the net number three. You've broken the net number three. I am entitled to fish in this area as much as you and I am mean, I am clear of your nets. You just plan to keep your area for yourself. Don't tell me lies again. I hold up my gear for you. And no nets there. Three hearts spirit from all this. <laughs> With British Spanish relations in tatters, it's time to move on.
The foreign boat has bagged this area and the rewards aren't worth the hassle. There's plenty more fish in the sea for Sojong Hoops. 300 miles away in the Norwegian center, Harmony. The pair trawlers, sunrise and ocean dawn always work together, sharing good times and bad. Just lately, they've mostly been bad. Very bad. Failed nets, few fish and fierce gales have left skipper Ian Ritchie. Get spear, did you? And his friend John Stephen feeling a wee bit depressed. Last week, up this hell, we made a, a pure cut up of it. <laughs> Storms forced them to take shelter in the Norwegian port of Bergen. But after 24 hours drowning their sorrows, the pair are back out and ready to chance their luck again. Skipper John's son, John Jr., has high hopes. If everything goes to plan, we'll have a midnight date with a block attack. They're targeting Coley, or Blackfish. Not quality, but quantity. That night, they reached their objective, the Norwegian oil fields. They're planning to shoot the pipe. Coley are attracted to the warmer waters around North Sea oil pipes. The skipper's plan is simple, to trawl along the pipeline. If we don't get a black at all, it's going to be very grim circumstances. Just one big haul of Coley could turn the whole trip around for the two crews. Net surfaces. It's clear straight away that the pipeline ambush has produced a big bag of fish. But it's enough to restore their fortunes. Totally big things again. One hundred boxes. That's the most important thing. Between two and three hundred boxes, shall we say? In fact, they're both wrong. It's a whopping 350 boxes. The biggest haul of the year. There's such a huge amount of fish that the Ocean Dawn's hopper soon fills to capacity. But half the catch is still in the sea. It has to be passed to the sunrise. In no time, she's packed to the gunnels with black coley. Yeah, it's a good size of black as well. It's a good size of coley. It's not too small. For the first time in a long time, they've got more fish than they can handle. Well, that's a good haul, a nice haul. To make a difference in the fish room. Nice nice caller. Yeah, we've got a cake now. Celebrate. <laughs> there are so many fish to gut that skipper John Stephen dons his oil skins to help the crew. Both crews will have to work all night to pack and process the catch. The Ocean Venture has yet to find any fish, but John's put his Spanish spat behind him. He's got a new plan. We'll head for the Papa Bonk. There's nobody been there for years, I would say, fishing, so we'll go back and see if there's any hurricks in the go. It's just a hard shot, however, I think we'll go and give it a try. It's a three-hour trek to Papa Bank, 50 miles off the Shetland Islands. Will John's instinct and guesswork pay off with a big haul of haddocks? Oh, 
see it, but I waste of time. Eh? It's no fresh. Dry it up with it, eh? Dry it up with it, eh? So we have a long steam bike. Change of course. That's why there's no boats here, there's no fresh. Eh? Very disappointed. Plan B. Fishing can be like gambling. A game of skill and chance. Sean's new roll of the dice takes him to the edge. Literally. He's after Mount Fish now. Elusive, but expensive. A good haul of Mount Fish will be about five boxes. Even a small haul will pay for some of John's fuel. But instead of Mount Fish, all he's found is Dog Fish. The haul is next to worthless. Plan C. It's a gamble in deep water. John's after redfish now. High value once again, but only found a hundred miles out in the Atlantic. He's already burned eight thousand pounds worth of diesel. And there's barely a fish in the hole. Wiggy wiggy lunch! Wiggy wiggy! But you never know what'll turn up when you fish in deep waters. Or so says first mate Barry Lawton. And then could be in a net this depth. We're about 240 fathoms now fishing. And it's very deep. You get some features of the deep out here, so... First a spat for the Spanish, now a haul of Argentines or poor quality silver smelt. Not John's finest hour. The trip is now ten thousand pounds in the red, but John's still feeling lucky. Could this be his day after all? Yeah, I waste that day, boys. Eh? Check out what they take out of two numbers in one line. Eh? No use. Well, go and cut some fresh now and stay there with him, The tide might just be on the turn for John. There's something big in the net. It's actually a rare Atlantic deep sea octopus, or Halophon Atlanticus, nearly two meters long and female. Our gelatinous body is built to withstand the enormous pressures found five miles down in the deep ocean. Their diet is simple enough. Crabs, sea worms, and prawns. Like the trawl men, they used to fish. But even a deep sea octopus won't pay Ocean Ventures fuel bill. John's fishing mission continues. For the payers, it's almost mission accomplished. With their haul of Chloe safely in the hold, they've decided to chance their luck one more time with some higher value species. The weather's near perfect for fishing. Can anything go wrong? These ribs. We an engine. The controls broken. But no rears. It's just a engine, just idling. It's a connect on a net power. 
Jegovi, da ga znova sina Trotska, snava. Vsak šija rubi ne gledalo, nova hina Trotska, snava. Vrga kovati. Vrga kovati. The ship's engineer is stumped. A key bit of the computer has died. There are no spares. It's got a good hole that last trip over. Three hundred bolts to the tourist down. That last hole and none of this happens. This trip has just been one last fucking trip from start to weather. No fish. Bloody disaster. The whole trip is scuppered. What's more, Sunrise will have to tow the Ocean Dawn back to Peterhead. All 200 tons of them. In the great expanse of the North Sea, most fishing boats face crises alone. With pair trawlers, at least the problem for shape. Good morning, Vaughn. Did you go out here a pair, team? You know, we still need to tell you we've got a problem with this. But there's one thing. Very little more can go wrong in this trip. That's one good part. So far, we've left the harbour looking for hikes. Then we're looking for bug fish. And then we went looking for <laughs> the Ocean Venture guzzles 2,000 pounds worth of diesel a day. After six days at sea, John needs to catch fish. Any fish. Suddenly, for the first time this trip, the catch sensor attached to the net is triggered. Like the pair trawlers before him, John finds it's the black coli has come to the rescue. That's a big, big Tons more. They're going to need huge amounts of ice to keep the catch fresh. John's oblivious to the meltdown below decks. After his fish famine, he's got just one plan now to catch everything he can. Well, we're just going away to do the same again, I hope. It's going to be a long day. Work in the fish room is frantic. John's looking for another massive hole, but the ice machine's on a good floor. Three baskets, it's a seven. Jesus 
said keep it up for most of you to eat fifteen ton a day already. So it's all to come. Oh me, me, me. In fishing, as in life, you can sometimes have too much of a good thing. So we're about catch twenty-two position. It's logical we're going to catch more fish. And we're not going to make a lot of ice in it. It'll be two of another couple of hours. We're not going to make a lot of ice in two hours. And just hope that we don't catch too much fish, eh? Yeah, we got like a skipper saying, hope he doesn't catch too much fish. John Barton is the victim of his own success. John Stephen on the pairs is facing failure again. Ocean Dawn has just broken free from her toe. Yes, I think, yes. All of the Ocean Dawn's reels. The train of towing has ripped away a section of Ocean Dawn's steel guardrail. Oh, me, me, lass. Can't spare the joke. If they don't get their catch to market soon, the fish they've caught will rot. It's time for a hard decision. And for the pair trawlers to separate. The sunrise will leave Ocean Dawn and head home to Peterhead for help. We get to try and catch the market, get my fish landed, then we can go and right back out again. They are aiming to pick up the new computer part and steam back to Ocean Dawn to fix her engine. Then maybe she can land her catch before it spoils. Yet another twist to the plot. You feel worse yourself if it's your boat that lets the thing do again. It's uh, got to help it. For these weary trawlermen, the last ten days have been more like soap opera than serious fishing. In the Atlantic, Ocean Ventures next haul is just bursting to the surface. It's massive. What are you doing with that one? But the ice machine now has only one speed. Dead slow. That's not even funny, like. I don't know. What am I supposed to do with no ice? It looks like they'll be forced to abandon the catch. John's wishful thinking won't make the ice machine work any faster. It's not going to take long to finish this race, I'll tell you that. Fish on the menu, again. If you can't freeze your catch, you can at least start to eat it. Twenty tons more to go now. After abandoning her sister ship, the Ocean Dawn, the Sunrise has steamed through the night to get her catch into Peterhead Market. Four o'clock in the morning, there's no other fish in, so hopefully we'll get good prices tomorrow, even though the trip has been a No time to lose. John wants to get back out again as quick as he can. Get him out quick and get away from the boat back up to you. More than half this fish is caught in one hole. The biggest hole we've had this year so far. So hopefully it'll salvage this trip. It's five in the morning, but they've managed to track down the spare part for Ocean Dawn. Sheen's back. Get up. Right, John, you want to wait? Come on. John doesn't even wait to hear what price his own fish gets at auction. 
He's doing all he can to save his fellow skipper, Ian, who's half a catch. Oh, why, why help one another, right? Yes. We have to do the main expert. Floundering in the North Sea, Ian and his crew have nothing to do but wait. Hello! Do you hear me? John's agent calls with the price for the fish he's just landed. Right, what do you have to do, Frick? It's more than expected. One minute. Hold, all right. All right. Yes, I'm still on the way. Right up. Cheers again, lad. It's a good place, is it? Fearsome. 22 and a half thousand on it. Don't kill the crew. Right, get Good news travel fast. 22 and a half thousand, huh? <laughs> That's a big price, right? 22 and a half grand. Over the world, it was a good price in the market for the trouble we went through this truck. And all the hassle. Well, it was worth the engine, Mr. Stephen. I'm going to make a right decision. There's <coughs> good summing out of the anyway, huh? It's a near record price for the beer trolling team. Eighteen and a half journey. See how fun it works. Eighteen and a half. Eighteen and a half. What the first good thing is on this trip. <laughs> On Ocean Venture, John Barkins managed to keep his cool. The ice machines finally caught up with the monster hall. Ice machines made some ice now. Ice splash ice. has caught over 700 boxes of coley in just two days. The trip is salvaged. She can come for home. It's taken Sunrise just 24 hours to make the 300 mile round trip back to Ocean Dawn. That's it. <laughs> if the new part doesn't work, the fish in her partner's hold will spoil. In plastic, the delicate computer part is their only hope. But first they've got to chance it in the North Sea. been a long, lonely wait. It's all down to Ocean Dawn's engineer, Davy. Reunited, the pair trawlers head for home and a £50,000 payday for the combined catch. But the price of fish is a poor measure of the worth of the men who catch it. Hard work, comradeship and courage. These are the everyday currency for those who take on the North Sea as trawlermen.